Analyzing the NXT roster. Alexis Corio here back with some more wrestling talk content on the Alexis Corio brand YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any wrestling talk content in the future. And we continue on this road of analyzing some of the best rosters on the North American wrestling scene. And after the Superstar Shakeup, after analyzing Raw and SmackDown Live, and after analyzing Impact Wrestling, it's time to analyze the NXT roster, the building grounds, the, the, the developmental territory for the WWE. And especially, and NXT is a very special case, I should say, in terms that uh, they were affected by the superstar shakeup, most likely not directly since they weren't an actual part of it. But one week before it actually happened, we got the NXT call-ups, call-ups that will affect the NXT roster in the very near future because they lost some very talented people. So they lost some very talented performers. Uh, no way, Jose. The team of Authors of Pain, Akam and Razor, Drew McIntyre and Ember Moon, they went over to Raw, big losses there. And then Andrade Cien Almas, Zelina Vega, Killian Dane, Alexander Wolfe, Eric Young, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce went over to SmackDown Live just to bolster up that roster even more with tons of in-ring wrestling talent. So obviously... NXT being affected by it, uh, they lost, like I said, some main players, some main event talent that uh, a few of them were ready to move up to the big leagues, a few, uh, uh, a, a few number of them might have been better staying off in NXT for a little while more, so let's get right to it, you know the subcategories, tag teams, lower mid card, mid card, upper mid card, and the main event for the men, we've got the mid card and the main event for the woman. So in terms of the tag team division, and you know, just a, a disclaimer here, I'm not that familiar with the NXT roster, I'm not that familiar with every superstar that the NXT has had to offer over the past few years. Also in terms of storyline, so I'm just going out on a limb. And you know, in terms of tag teams, we've got uh, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford. I believe those are the Street Profits. They still got to uh, get a few more wins in their uh, win-loss record, in their record overall, for me to buy into them as a future tag team title contenders. We've got the team of Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, who, if I remember correctly, Bobby Fish is currently injured, so really that tag team of Kyle O'Reilly is now with Roderick Strong. After that whole shocking surprise that we got a takeover, that's the tag team of the Undisputed Era. We've got Oney Larkin and Danny Birch. We've got Hanson and Rowe. Don't remember what uh, name they were given. I believe uh, Hanson and Rowe are currently, uh, the, well, they, they're the team formerly known as War Machine, so big thing expected from them. Nick Miller and Sean, Shane Thorne, I should say, TM61, who returned a few weeks ago, they still got to build back their repertoire in terms of wins and losses. Like I said, we've got the team of Riddick Moss, Tino Sabatelli, and finally we got Tucker Knight and Otis Dosovich. Uh, you know, a team of Heavy Machinery, I think that that's their name, so... So obviously, with them losing the team of Sanity, with them losing the team of Authors of Pain, they've still got to push some of these tag teams up into title contention. We'll see how that works in the near future. Then we got the lower mid card. Now these are guys, these are men that, uh, you know, I've been watching NXT over the past two, three, four months. None of these men have appeared on TV, or if they have, they haven't been doing much. We've got four men. We've got Cesar Ponini. Ponini, I think that's his last name. We've got Fabian Aitner. We've got Kona Reeves. 
and we've got Wesley Blake. Obviously, you know, not big names, so they're obviously in the lower mid card. They're practically, you know, I don't like using this term, but they're practically jobbers, at least in my view for now. We'll see what kind of plans NXT has for them going on forward. In the mid card, we've got uh, Buddy Murphy, you know, lucky son of a bitch who's engaged with Alexa Bliss. We've got Leo Rush, who was suspended or was put on ice by the WWE brass, has yet to return to the company to NXT, I believe. Obviously, Roderick Strong right now in the tag team with Kyle O'Reilly, but as soon as Bobby Fish returns, Roderick Strong will go back to being in the mid card and possibly uh, being the North American champion while they move Adam Cole back up into the main event and for the NXT title contention. Then we've got Trent Seven and Tyler Bates, some uh, really some names that haven't appeared much on NXT, I have yet to see from them. And this is where it, it gets good for NXT. They are certainly filled with great independent talent. And you know, all you have to do is look at the upper mid card and the main event level superstars that they have to offer. And starting with the mid card, I mean, you got EC3, hell of a guy, hell of a, hell of a talent, quite, not quite in the in-ring aspect, but in terms of looking as a superstar. And speaking as a superstar, he's got it dotted down, you know, obviously since his, his time in Impact Wrestling. We've got Cassius Ono, who I believe NXT has misused over the past uh, year since they haven't been using him, using him as a, at his fullest potential. He's a big guy, very agile, very strong, very fast, and very skilled, uh, uh, you know, in-ring talent-wise. They've got to get more out of him. We've got Lars Sullivan, big, giant behemoth. behemoth. We've got Pete Dunne, the United Kingdom champion himself. Very young man. Bright future for him in NXT. Ricochet, the independent scene darling. Ricochet, you know, I don't see him in a main event just yet. I see him, you know, I, I, I see him in a feud of the year candidate with my next, uh, with the next uh, man in the, in the upper mid card, the Velveteen Dream. I think they, they could have not only a great feud in the ring, but on the mic, Velveteen Dream can bring it. And I believe Velveteen, Velveteen Dream will make Ricochet say his name. And then we've got to the main event of the NXT roster. Highlighted by the current NXT champion, Aleister Black. Big things coming for this man. He looks the part. He wrestles the part. He talks the part. He's a champion. And he certainly brings out the feel of an icon for not only for NXT but also for WWE in the future. Hopefully when he gets called up to the main roster, WWE does not drop the ball with Aleister Black. We've got uh, Adam Cole, baby. That's right, Adam Cole, the current North American champion. And just like Seth Rollins on Raw, I don't, I believe that he will not hold on to that title for much longer because eventually he needs to be moved up into the main event. He needs to be uh, challenging for the main title of the brand. That's where I put Adam Cole. And then we've got possibly one of the best baby faces in all of professional wrestling today, Johnny Gargano. The wrestling crowds have just connected with this man thoroughly. They just support him practically blindly, but you know, these these uh, feuds of the year with Andrade Cien Almas, Andrade being the man that he was, Johnny Gargano being the the Daniel Bryan type guy in NXT, the everyman type in NXT, Mr. Johnny Wrestling. Fans got behind him, and then we've got the whole Tommaso Ciampa, costing him not only the NXT title, but also costing him his spot on the roster. Johnny Gargano, I think, should be next in line as the top babyface in NXT, as a top babyface champion in NXT after Aleister Black 
get called up to the main roster. And then we've got arguably one of the biggest heel magnets, heat magnets in the world today. One of the biggest heels in Tommaso Ciampa. And, you know, just looking at the guy, that beard, that look he gives, you know, that, uh, that aura he, he transmits to the crowd, that's definitely a heel at his fullest. And I can't wait what kind of, you know, ugly shit Tommaso Ciampa has to bring to Johnny Gargano's life. Then we've got the women's mid-card. Again, these are women who I'm not really familiar with. So, you know, I've put them in this mid-card out of default. We've got Vanessa Bourne. We've got Tainara Conti. We've got Lacey Evans. We've got Dakota Kai and uh, Bianca Belair and Aaliyah. These are the women that I haven't seen much from. Hopefully in the coming weeks, uh, the booking team in NXT can really give them something, uh, a feud or a match or something to chew on so that they can really, really be elevated into the main event of the women's division. Speaking of the main event of the women's division, we've got Candice LeRae, Johnny Gargano's wife. She has yet to make that much of an impact as much as Johnny Gargano. We've got Kyrie Sane, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Mae Young Classic winner, future NXT Women's Champion. We've got Nikki Cross, who was separated from Sanity, wasn't caught up to SmackDown Live, but I believe there's a reason for that, and that is so she can become NXT Women's Champion. And then we've got the champ herself, Shayna Baszler. Gotta say, I'm not a big fan of her. Might be just the fact that I'm, you know, every time I see her on screen, I'm scared the shit out of her because she is legit. She can go in the ring. She can snap, tap, or snap, tap, or nap. I think that's that's her saying. So obviously, if I if I found Shayna Baszler in the streets with that look she gives the other woman on the roster, on the NXT roster, I'd be running as fast as I could the other way. So anyway, you know, those are my my analysis of the NXT roster. Very much on the surface, like I said, I'm not very familiar with uh, everything NXT. I'm, I'm barely getting into the NXT product. Enjoying it, so enjoy, enjoying it, I should say, enjoying it very much, but uh, I have yet to be fully knowledgeable on the NXT brand. Uh, so, you know, what are your thoughts on my subcategories on, on how I divided the NXT roster? And uh, leave a comment below if you think I misplaced someone, if you think someone should be in the main event, if you think sh someone should be in the upper mid card. Leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's it for me. Till next time.